Hello and welcome. This is Dr. Victor. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to read in data from a CSV file using C. I'll explain what a CSV file is and how to write your program in C that reads in the content and performs some simple data processing. Let's begin. One of the main uses of a program is to read in a large amount of data and do some data processing. For example, you have a file with all the midterm marks for your class and you want to find out the average. Or you have a file with the price of some product over the last few months or years and you want to see the trend. In these cases, what you have is a bunch of text in the file which your program is going to pass them into operable values. So you can do some fancy arithmetic on them. A typical way to store data in a file is to put them as text in a comma separated values format, or in short, CSV, where each entry takes one line. And the associated values are separated by commas. Here in the screen, you can see an example of the hourly data report for September 2023 in a city called Abbotsford. It is in British Columbia. As you can see at the first line, describes what each of the following column is going to be uh, referring to. And each of them is separated by a this little comma thing. All right, so there's comma and another comma here. And from this line onwards, you will see that there's data that corresponds to a longitude separated by the comma. There's the latitude separated by another comma. The station name as a third A, as third A, separated by another comma. Right. And you have all the hourly data uh, listed line by line over here. Now, let's talk about how to write a C program reading all of these lines or all this data from this file. So let's create a file. Let's call it uh, readdemo.c. First, what we need to do is to tell the program to open a file. So before we do that, we need to include the library. So the library is the standard library. So I'm going to say standard library. And then we're going to write a very simple uh, main function so that our program can actually start and run properly. properly. So it's going to be a means main. And then we're going to just simply just return zero to indicate that everything is working fine if we reach this point. All right. So here we want to tell the program to open the file. To do that, we are going to create a file pointer. So it's called file, and it's going to be a pointer. Right. Let's call it file pointer. Right. And the rest of the code is uh, achieved by calling the fopen function, which returns a file pointer, which we're going to take in, which will keep track of where in the file the program is currently reading. So to finish this line, we're going to say f open. In this function, what we're going to do is we need to first tell the program or tell this function which file we are going to open. So I'm going to tell it, okay, well, here is the name of our file. So I'm going to uh, copy the name, just quickly do this, come back to here, paste the name. Don't forget to include the full name or the extension of this file, which is, excuse me, it's a CSV. So this is the name of a file. The next thing we want to do is there are different ways to open a file. Maybe you want to open a file to write something into that, or you simply want to read something from this file. Depending on what you want to achieve, you're going to tell or you're going to provide a mode for this app open function. So in this case, we're going to just read things from a file. So we're going to use our, which stands for read. All right, so now we have a way to open a file. It's actually good practice to immediately write a um, function call that closes the file so that we don't leave this file open or hanging. So we're going to call another function called fclose. In fclose, we're going to tell exactly which file we want to close because we could have open more than one file and now then we have to close individual files like this. Right. But since we only have one file, we only need to uh, open one and close one. Now, of course, in between, we're going to do a bunch of like reading and data processing. So what's going to happen next is we're going to read the file line by line. And to do that, we are going to 
create a uh, buffer or line buffer so that whenever we read in a line from the file, it's going to be stored inside of inside this program uh, in this uh, buffer uh, array. And to do that, we are going to use the C string that is um, well documented in the C programming to store each of the lines. So let's say we're going to create this line buffer and um, you may wonder, so how, how big is the buffer going to be? So typically what we want to do is we want to take a look at the file, the, the uh, data file, when figure out what is the longest line that, that, that is in the file. So over here, the longest line obviously is our first line. So let's quickly take a, take a peek at how many characters are there. So you see that there are about 454 uh, four characters, right? So it means that we want to have at least a, um, a buffer that can store the number of characters in that longest line. So let's uh, keep it safe. Let's play safe. And then by giving it uh, more than slightly more than enough. So let's say we have 512 boxes. So that should be more than enough to store all of the lines from this file. While we are, we can take a look at the CSV file just like what we did before and look at how many lines to in total are in the file and therefore write a loop with that exact amount of iterations. I want to show you the more general way where we can let the program stop reading the file when actually all the lines are read. So it doesn't really matter how big the file or how small the file is, the program is going to automatically stop when it reaches the end of the file. Right. So the function we're going to use to read in a line is called the fgetx function or file get stream function. Uh, what it does is it will read things from a file stream and put the information into a character array as a C string. It will stop when either a given amount of characters are read or it has reached the end of a line, whichever comes first. So if we want to read a line, we can give an amount of characters so that it is more than the longest line in the file and it's guaranteed that the function is going to end when it reads in an entire line. So we're going to do this for our first uh, first line. So let's take a look at what we, how we can call this function. So we now have a buffer. We're going to read in the first line. Let me just do a little comment here. Let's say read in the first line, first line from the file. All right. So we call it f get s. In f get s, we're going to provide three things. Uh, to this function. The first thing is where are we going to place this information into? So here we have a line buffer. So I'm going to call line over here. And then we are going to say, well, um, try to read as much as you can, but don't exceed the, um, the limit of uh, where our character array can hold. So here we have 512. So let's use 512 over here. Now, the next thing is we are going to tell it from where we're going to read. Imagine that you have more than one file. Then, of course, you need to tell fgetS to read from that particular file. In this case, we're going to read from this particular file, which we uh, name file pointer over here. Right. Now, essentially, we have done uh, exactly what we want to do here by reading in just one file. So I'm going to just for uh, debug purposes and to show you how it works, I'm going to just simply just print this line to you. So print F, use, um, so say first line to make it uh, very obvious. And then next, I'm going to print it in the format of a string. Right. I'm going to add a little uh, end of line character here to just to make things look a little bit better. Next thing is I'm going to tell it to print what's contained in the line. All right, so I save my work. I come to my terminal and I'm going to compile the code. Here I'm going to use the GCC compiler that I download from uh, another place to compile my C source code. To do that, I'm going to call GCC and I'm going to tell it you can actually just um, place it or output it into this particular file name and I'm going to provide it with the name of my source code. So it is readdemo.c. Press enter and they said, oh, um, something is wrong. So what's wrong? It turns out that I forgot to include the library that de um, defines what uh, printf is going to be. So it's very helpful. I'm going to just include this so that I can uh, skip all these warnings. So I'm going to do uh, standard IO. All right, save my work and I'm going to 
do another compile. So there's no more warning. That's great. Next, I'm gonna try to run it. So now I have a file that is called readdemo.exe. So to run it, I can type dot slash readdemo. I can type exe or I can skip it. It doesn't really matter. And I can see that now I see one line. So if you compare our first line to the first line over here, which you will see that is uh, the same, what we expect over here. Oops, sorry about that. Right. Now you will see that I have uh, an empty line over here. Why is that the case? It turns out that in a file like this, there is an invisible character called Lex line. And this is also going to be read by fgets. Because of that, when I print out the line, along with the characters that you see in this file, the first line, it actually prints that invisible character as well. So that's why you see one extra line over here. So how do we get rid of this? Because in most cases, we don't really need that new line invisible character. So one trick I tend to do is I'm just going to truncate it with a end of string character, which is used by C string to, to indicate that this is the last or the end of my string. So what I can do is I can say, well, line, and then since it is an, a character array, I'm going to use string length. I'm going to index the, the line itself, and then look at the very last character, which is that invisible character that will cause print an extra, uh, an extra line. To do that, I'm going to truncate it with the extra end of line character over here. So let me quickly show you uh, what the difference is going to be. So I'm going to save my work. I'm going to compile again. And uh, now it's going to give me another warning. Why? Because now I'm calling a function called string length, which is defined in another library. So I'm going to do that again. This time I'm going to include uh, the string library, the string dot h over here. All right, so with that, we are going to compile again. Again, no more issues. We are going to run our program again. And the program is still the same. The name is the new uh, executable. And you can see that now this little uh, gap is uh, removed because now we truncated with that with the end of line, uh, end of string character. All right, so you can compare this with, oh, let me just move up a little bit. This, this, this gap. So there's mo no more that like that here. All right, so we have successfully read in one line, but that's not really what we want because we have a lot of lines to actually read into our program. So this is what we are going to do next. Now again, without um, knowing how many lines, the information about how many lines to read, we will make use of the return value of our f get s because what happens is that when f get s reaches the end of the file, it will return a null pointer. And because of that, we can use this information as the terminating condition for our while loop. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a while loop. So I'm going to write while. And our the um, continuing condition is as long as f get s is reading something in and it does not return the null uh, pointer variable or the null pointer value. So what we can do is we can say f get s. I'm going to call it again. So what we can expect is that if you go through the, uh, the code, it's going to read the first line and then it's going into the while loop. It's going to read the second line. So I'm going to read it again, put what I have read into the buffer. And then I'm going to read in another uh, at most 512, knowing for sure that it will not exceed that number. So I know that it's going to uh, read an entire line from my file. So this continuing condition is as long as it is not returning now, that means that that's act, this fget s function has successfully read in uh, a line from the file. All right. So inside, once I hit this line, uh, 16, that means I've read the line in. And then if you take a look at this file, it's going to be reading in the second line, the first iteration of my while loop, right? so which is this line. So once again, what we want to do is we want to do the same trick. We want to truncate this over here so that we don't have that extra uh, 
invisible character being shown or used uh, for the rest of our program. So we will use that. Just for fun, let's uh, try to just print everything out. All right, so I'm going to say, I'm going to print it out and I'm going to say uh, not the first line anymore. I'm just going to say next, next line. All right, so save our work, come back here, compile it using GCC. No, word, uh, no errors, no warning. That's great. And I'm going to run it again. So you can see that now my program has been running a lot. And uh, what it happens is that it's actually going, it was going into this file, reading in line by line until the end of this file. So we can actually quickly take a look at what is in the last line of this file. And it's saying, oh, um, this is the uh, last entry on uh, September 30th, right? So it's reading in September 30th, uh, 2300, and that corresponds to this last line. Right. You can also see that there's no extra gap between each of the lines because we did the same trick as before. All right, so that's great. Um, now, the next thing is what I want to do is that's not the end of, the, of what we want to do here. Next, we want to uh, pass the text into some useful value so that later on we can do some calculations of that. Uh, to do this, we need to extract what we need from that particular line each time we go into the while loop. The function we are going to use is the string tokenizer or string toke. Uh, this function is quite interesting. What it does is to scan the string in question and look for a delimiter, which is a character where the function will stop at and replace with an end of string character, which is the same thing as we use here. So in our example, since our CSV file inside this file, each of the value is separated by a comma, we will use this comma as our delimiter. If there is more than one delimiter in the string, we can call the string tokenizer function again and again to move forward. So suppose in this, uh, in this example, we want to extract the temperature. Uh, of data value from a file. So we take a look at the, the header line and we notice that it is actually just before the 10th comma. So we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10th. So with that in mind, we can do what we can do is we can uh, write uh, the, uh, the code to use our string tokenizer 10 times. So let's take a look at how we can do it. Right, so we are come back, coming back to here. We are going to add a few lines over here. Now, at this point, the line um, buffer is storing that particular line that uh, uh, fget s has uh, just finished reading in. So which is a line something like this. Oh, sorry, something like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to call string tokenizer over here. And what string tokenizer returns is the pointer of the first token that it has found. So I'm going to use a character pointer to capture that. Let's call it a string pointer. And then it's going to, we're going to call string tokenizer the first time. And since this is the first time calling it, it needs to know which string it is actually looking at. And we're going to provide it with the string token, uh, the lim delimiter, which is a comma. Next, we're going to be, after this uh, function is going to call what string point is going to point, it's actually going to be the, f uh, the first uh, token that is in that line. But this is not what we want, right? Because what we want is actually the 10th token. So what we are going to do is we are going to call string tokenizer another nine times so that the string pointer is going to accept that uh, correct temperature value lo as location. So what we're going to do is, since we know exactly how many times we want to repeat, we're going to use a for loop. So we'll repeat uh, nine times, so i less than nine, and then we're going to increment i by uh, one each time. So I'm going to say, well, if that's the case, I'm going to advance. Essentially, I'm advancing my string uh, pointer. Right, so I'm going to call string tokenizer a few more times. Each time, what it does is that instead of telling it to start over, it is going to start from now. So that string tokenizer knows that it is to continue with the same string. Right. Again, we're going to look for the uh, comma, use of comma as a delimiter. 
Now, once we have this, at this point, we can actually take a look at what we actually get from uh, the string pointer. So uh, let's just give it a try. I'm just going to say printf, and then I'm going to say, uh, let's say captured, or let's use extract, extracted, and then I'm going to say percentage s, which is again a string. And then I'm going to say this is what I extracted, string pointer. Right. So let's see what it tells us. So I'm going to save my work. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to compile my code again. I'm going to run it. Um, so we're going to, it's going to keep reading things. And you can see that what it has extracted is this guy. So it can correspond to the last item that we saw here. It's the temperature. But it is not quite what we want because it's really just a text that looks has the form of 8.3 and also comes with these like double quotes. Right? So it's not really a number that we can add or subtract or multiply. So what we are going to do next is we are going to use another function to parse or convert this uh, representation of uh, a decimal number or floating point number into a floating point variable in C. So what we're going to do is um, we are going to do a few tricks over here. The first thing we're going to do is no, we know that we don't really need this uh, trailing uh, double quote because that's not part of the numbers representation. So we're going to use the same trick over here. I'm going to write our um, going to write our string pointer. Remember that pointer. And then it's going to um, use string length again, string length. And then I'm going to know where string length is. And then I'm going to, what string length is. And so I'm going to truncate it with uh, the end of nine character over here. Right. Now, the next thing is I am going to <clears throat> use the function called A to F. To convert the um, this string format into a floating point variable, which is a numerical value. So I'm going to create, say, another float. Uh, let's, let's call uh, temperature, and that is going to capture the function that is returned by a to uh, by a to f. And what a to f needs to know is where the c string is, right? So what we are going to return, we can expect is going to be something like this. And then with a slash zero uh, at the end, replacing this uh, little guy over here. So what we want to do is we don't really want this. Uh, we remove the trailing um, double, double quote. We also want to remove the leading trail, uh, the leading uh, double quote. So there's a, a way to do that is by doing this uh, pointer arithmetic. So instead of telling exactly uh, the same place where we start with the uh, double quote uh, included, we're going to tell string to uh, sorry a to f to start looking at one character past what it should uh, what it is remembering or pointing to. So this is what we call a pointer arithmetic. So with that, it is going to uh, skip over this double quote and start reading. 8.3 and convert it into the numerical value of 8.3. So to make sure that we actually get it right, we can actually write uh, print f. This time we're going to say uh, temperature extracted temperature tem. How do I spell temperature? Tem 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 temperature. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to say, use the format of float. And then I'm going to say temperature over here. Right. So essentially what we are doing is we do the exactly same thing, but uh, we also convert it into, convert the extracted data into something that we can say, add, subtract, multiply, or modify, just like any other numbers. All right. so let's save our work. And then we will compile our code again, and we're going to run it. Going to run a bunch of times, and uh, you can see that by the end it finishes reading, and you can see that now it is reading in our temperature into a floating point number with um, 8.3.
Now, the reason why you see a bunch of zeros here is by default, if we tell printf to print the floating point numbers, there's a default number of decimal places that uh, we are printing out. So of course, when you are doing a calculation, the more, float, uh, the more decimal places, the better, because it's more accurate. But then you can also change the format to say 0.2 to really just show two decimal places if that's what you want, All right? So in summary, if we want to read from a CSV file in C, we will first open the file using F open, providing the exact file name and say it is our, uh, we are going to just go to the read mode of opening a file and then use the F get S function to read in the, uh, the content from the file line by line. Once we uh, do that, we will also be able to extract the necessary information using the uh, a sequence of calls of string tokenizer. If it is a CSV file, we're going to use the comma as a delimiter, and we are going to use a function, say, A to F or A to I, if it is an integer, to pass or convert that text representation of a numerical value into actual numerical data uh, type in our code to perform other kinds of uh, mathematical arithmetics. I hope you have learned something useful. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.